Hey everyone! As many of you know, Pokemon Go has recently been released and has taken over much of social media. I have been working on 3D printing team badges for Mystic, Instinct, and Valor. I was asked how I made the 3D models, so I thought I would show you guys two ways that I did it. This video will have the first method I used for both the Mystic and Instinct models. Let's get started. Alright, so here we are in Autodesk Maya 2016. So the first step that I need to do is put down my reference image. So I'm going to go ahead and actually switch to the top view. And then I'm going to go to view, image plane, import image. And I already have a PNG of the Instinct logo. right there so we're going to hit open and it's going to plop the image plane down so I'm going to go ahead and kind of move it around I need to go and open my outliner and select it and I'm going to move it around so I can get it kind of centered on my grid just like that so then the next step and this method I just throw down a cube and start working with it. So we're going to go ahead and work on the tail section first. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to select my cube, and we are going to be working with the edges. Um, right now, because Zapdos looks pretty symmetrical, I was going to try and turn on symmetry so I could be working on both sides at once. The problem was that it is actually not a symmetrical image so um, I ended up having to not do this method but here you can see I'm trying to connect the edges together so I have extra edges along the sides so I'm just gonna go right in here select the edges go to mesh and connect So now I'm going to just move this edge right here down right to that point in the tail. And so see here I'm trying to use that symmetry, go back to the top view and pull it up and move both sides at a time, but as you can see it's not actually symmetrical. So I had to go in and turn off symmetry and just move that edge by itself and I go in from the top view because I can see my reference image and the object edge to line it up nicely. So now I'm going to go and take that side edge that I made using the connect and slide it on out. I'm going to go to Mesh, uh, Edit Mesh, Connect again. So here we are, we are working on this edge right here, and I'm just going to pull it out to this tail feather area over here. Alright, and then we've got another edge right there, so this is the center one, so I'm just going to pull this one all the way down, right about there. So then we've got this edge right here. I'm going to pull it over to meet that corner right there. So I need to just connect these two right here. I'm going to edit mesh and connect. And then I'm going to pull that out right in there. So we've got those nice corners. And then one more. These two right here. Go to edit mesh, connect and pull it out for that last tail feather. Just like that. So now that's one half of our tail done. I'm going to go ahead and select this other edge and pull it down here to finish that bottom tail feather. Pull this one out on the side that we made earlier and pull it right about there. I made a mistake with that extra edge there. So Now I'm just going to go in right here 
and edit mesh connect and this is going to be over there for that side tail feather I need two more so I'm going to connect this again and bring it back to meet that corner right there I need one more edge to pull out for that last tail feather so I'm going to go select those two edit mesh connect and then bring it out and there it is now go to object mode and our tail is complete so now I'm just going to rename this and name it tail so that when I'm looking in the outliner I know what that is. Um, this object is also one unit high I just left it the default from the cube. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and make another cube and make the outline of the beak. So this is going to be used for later when I do a boolean operation to cut the beak out of the main body object. So I'll get to that later. So right now we just need to make the beak and it's really easy it's just the four corners so we've got that one there I can just keep it a regular cube and just move its edge corners around to make this nice elongated diamond shape so this edge here is going to be the top right there and then that last one's going to be that last corner right there Now I'm going to go to object mode and look at it. See there is our outline for the beak. I'm going to name it beak cut out because we are going to use a boolean operation to cut that out of our body object. I'm going to go back to the attribute editor here and I'm going to scale it up a bit to make it really tall so that I know it goes clean through our one unit high object and then I'm just going to move it out of the way for right now. So now I've created another cube and this one's going to be the start of the body. So if you notice the body and the head are actually connected so this is all going to be one object. So once again going in and selecting the edges I'm going to go ahead and just select one and bring it down and that's going to be the bottom of the wings and body. going to take this top one over here and bring it all the way up. That's going to be the middle section for our the top of the head. Take this one right out here and I'm going to move it way out to the side. That's going to be our middle piece for that one wing tip. Then I'm going to do the same for the other side. Move it out to that same wing tip. All right. So now what I'm going to do is select those side edges, go to Edit Mesh, and Connect. Go back to the top view, and I'm just going to move them around. Figure out, okay, there's a corner right there, and then make another edge right in there. Edit Mesh, Connect. Once again, move it out to the sides. So now we've got the base of the wings right there with that first angle for the wing. Do the same thing on this side. Edit Mesh Connect and put it at that corner. And so I'm just going to keep working on this side. Edit Mesh Connect again and move it over to the side to meet that corner. And so now the bottom section is about right. So I'm going to go into x-ray mode so I can actually see through the object to make sure that I really get uh, in there and position it correctly. Right about there. I see I can now look through my model and I can see some edges are not quite lined up like I want them to. So I'm just going to kind of move those around a little bit more. And then I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video a little bit. 
so that I don't have to sit here for the entire 30 minutes of me adding edges and moving them around. So I'll resume it again when we get to a new point. All right, and now we've got this last little edge here that we're going to move around. Make sure that they're all in place. Looking through that x-ray mode again in the top view so I can position the edges just right. And then now that we're done, I'm gonna take x-ray off and now we've got our model laid out in the outline. So I'm gonna rename it now to body. And we can look at it. So we've got our tail piece now and our body piece. So our next step is to work on the um, areas of the logo. So we can kind of spin around here and see from top and bottom that our object does fit the outlines pretty close. So we've got Zapdos pretty much modeled. So I'm going to create a new cube and position it over to the side. So I'm going to once again work with the edges. I'm just going to take this one right here off in the corner and just move them right here. We won't really go that far. So once again turning on x-ray mode so that I can see the image underneath. Then we're going to go right here, edit mesh, connect again, and edit mesh, connect once again. So that we've got two edges here that I can work with. So this one right here, I'm going to go ahead and move all the way up to the top. I needed those other two, one for that little corner, and then the other one to be right up here at the top next to this one. All right, so that one's positioned correctly. I'm going to go back into perspective view, grab the other one right there back in the top view and move it all the way back up to the top and then grab that other one that we created move them down into the corner like that so I'm going to kind of flip around and grab this other edge and move it all the way down to the center of this point all the way down 
Oops, wrong one. Don't want to grab that. I want to move it just along these two axes. And then, you know what? Instead of doing that, I'm going to go ahead and move it up over here to be in line with the other one right up here at the top. I'm going to zoom in real quick. Just put it right there at the edge. So that's going to be covering up a lot of our Zapdos model at the moment. So I'm just going to take one edge, bring it all the way down, so now we've got a huge triangle, essentially. So I'm going to zoom back out. So if we go back into the perspective, it's just one big triangle. So I'm going to flip around, grab these two edges, and connect them. Edit Mesh Connect. I'm going to need to turn on X-ray so I can find that edge right there. And then turn it off. I'm going to go flip back into the top view and move it all the way down to form this V shape. Just like that. And then that means the entire left side of this triangle V is done, so all I need to do is add a couple more connections right here to form this top piece. So I'm going to edit mesh connect and find it and go ahead and do a couple more. Oops, click it and edit mesh connect. So now I've got all of them. So I'm just going to select all of them so I can move them down and they don't get covered up on accident. There's those out of the way. I'm going to go select this one that I made and bring it all the way up to the top right there. Make sure it's positioned right. Flip back around into perspective and click that one and put it back inside the little corner area like that. And then get the last edge and make sure that it is up at the top where it needs to be. Just like that. And so now the bottom part of the symbol is complete. And we're going to work on the top parts of the logo. So I'll go ahead and speed these up because it's a lot of the same stuff. Creating a cube, moving it around, and adding edges. Alright, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to select my object right here for this top left piece of the logo. I'm just going to duplicate it really quickly, move it over, and then flip it around using the scale. So I'm just going to give it a negative one scale. Just checking, so yeah, it's that one. So do a negative one in the X, and then just rearrange its edges to match. Instead of creating a new cube and adding edges and all that, I already know this one has the right number. So I'm just going to fiddle with this one. Okay, so now that our logo is completely modeled, I'm going to go ahead and move the image plane out of the way for right now. Still want to keep it just in case something goes wrong, but it's out of the way now, so it's not going to be right up in our face. So now I'm moving that beak object back up. So as you can see, it's sticking out of our body piece, and I'm going to go to Mesh, Booleans, and Difference. So go ahead and click OK. So see how it cut out right there where our beak was? Just like that. To so the Boolean, it'll take the two, and when I do Difference, 
it'll look at the one object and say, okay, if this is intersecting this, cut out that part. Um, then I'm going to go and go ahead and look at it. I'm going to go to edit, delete by type, history. So now it is actually one object, not the two objects with different kinds of positions or whatever. It's just one object. And it, I'm calling it, I'm renaming a couple things so that I know what they are instead of just p cube one, two, three. I actually know what they are. So symbol bottom, symbol left, and symbol right. So yeah, that's how I made the actual model. So now I'm going to go ahead and select them all and group them together. So we'll call this instinct. So grouping is different than combining or using a boolean in that these objects are still separate but you can move them all together. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the reference image. Now that we've got our actual team logo done, I'm going to show you all kind of how I've worked on the uh, how I've worked on the badge parts. So whenever I get done with the team logo, if you notice, it's in a bunch of different pieces, so that's not going to 3D print nicely and stay together. So what I've been doing is creating some kind of back plate to actually hold all of them together. So just really quickly, I'm just going to make a square. Because I know that'll hold everything together. And, I don't know, let's do something funny with it. Let's rotate it 45 degrees. I don't know. So this one's probably not going to be the final look of the Instinct Badge. It's just something to kind of show you how I've been making them. Uh, so I'm going to go to Edit Freeze Transformation. So that way it's not sitting at a 45. It actually thinks that it is completely how it's supposed to be. So I'm going to kind of scale it up. I've been doing with my badges where the wings of the birds stick off. So I'm going to try and do that. It's not the best with instinct, but it'll work for now to kind of show you how I do it. So right now I'm selecting my group and I'm going to move it down. After I've, Okay, so I've made a duplicate of my group, moved it down. So what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to bring in one of the other badges I made, the Team Mystic Badge, because I want to make sure that um, what I've been doing for my badges is having the backplate and then pretty much kind of like engraving the symbol inside of it, which you can kind of see when I move this out like that. Uh, so I want to make sure that I keep them all relatively the same depth. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a texture so I can tell the Mystic Badge apart from the Instinct Badge. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and move it around over here. Come on. There it is. Kind of right up next to where I have my other logo so that I can tell how far off the baseline to move it. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to the side view, kind of scroll in right there and move it up right about where the edge of the blue is right there. That's the tail of Articuno. I'm going to move it up to right about there. So that's what I'm going to use to kind of um, imprint this Zapdos design into this backplate. I'm going to move Mystic out of the way now. So I'm going to kind of scroll around and see, okay, so it's lifted up. I'm going to do another Boolean operation. But first I'm going to do a couple different uh, shaders so that I can just kind of tell everything apart. So I'm just going to make the back plate black and leave it at that. So now I'm going to take my Zapdos Instinct logo that I duplicated and move it up down here because I want the bottom of the logo to sit equal with the bottom of the back plate but I also want the top of it to not go over where I'm imprinting the design. I'm going to go ahead and scale it down 
move it down a little bit, scale it down again. Probably would have been easier if I had the origin point at the top or bottom, then it would have only scaled one way. But whatever. So I'll just leave it there for now. Move it out of the way. It's roughly where it needs to be. Um, gonna get back out of this, go back to perspective, and gonna increment and save again. So I'm going to select my two objects. I'm going to go to Mesh Boolean's Difference. Ended up doing the wrong one. You need to select them in the correct order. I think I just did it again. Boolean's Difference. Oh wait, no, that's, I realized my mistake. Um, right now that's all grouped. It's not one object. I'm going to do it again. Ready? And it's still not right. So the issue is my group is a group, not all one object. Nope, we're going to try it again and again. Just cut all this. Or no, don't cut all this. Y'all can see that I make mistakes too. So here's my issue. I'm trying to do a Boolean operation on a group, not two objects. So I'm going to go ahead and select all these and combine them, mesh combine, then edit, delete by type history. So now it is really and truly one object. That's my duplicate down at the bottom. So there's this guy and my mystic badge. So I'm just going to call this one instinct negative. So this is what I'm going to use for my Boolean operation. And the P cube one is the back. So now that it's all one object, if I go Boolean's difference, Wrong one again. So I need to select the backplate, then the logo, then do difference, and then it cuts it out. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab my group again. Go back to the side view. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and mesh combine, and then edit delete by type history. So it is also just one object, instinct, move tool. Now I'm going to go to the side view and move it up. I need to center its pivot because it was way up at the top. So I'm going to move it up and it's not quite flush with the bottom. So I need to go back in later and fix that. So I'm just going to create another texture right here, make it yellow, and then this way I can actually see when it's come through the top. So I'm going to go ahead and move it up slightly. So I want to make sure that it's actually coming up through the top. Yeah, just like that. A little bit higher, so I'm going to go fiddle with its values real quick. So 0.7 is not enough. 0.8 is definitely enough. That's fine. So, but it's not quite level on the bottom, which I need to go in and fix. But we'll do that in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and scale it up again. Slowly, just do small increments, bring it down again. Not big enough, so I'm going to scale it up again. Bring it down. Scale it up a tiny bit more. Actually, I'm just going to go fiddle with its values directly over here. Move it down just a tiny, tiny bit. I don't know why I keep clicking the scale tool if I'm just going to go and edit its values over here. Move tool. And that looks like it's pretty much on the bottom, right about there. And then it's still not quite, so about 2, 5? Nope, 2, 5 did not work. Let's move it back up so it's not on the bottom. Still not really tall enough. About three. Go back over maybe three, five. No, how about four? Then move it up to be level with the bottom again. That should definitely show through now. Yes, it does. So that way I can actually have the logo sticking out of the back plate. 
but also still be level with the back plate itself. So it's not like hanging off randomly, it's still the same thickness. So yeah, that's how I do my uh, Pokemon Go badges. So, thanks for watching.